Hey, what's up? Wes here, and this is my winning run for the Castlevania One Life Community Challenge that I issued at the beginning of October. So, I know who I'm up against. Paul Mega Retro Man Tessie, who always wins these things, even though this is only the third challenge. Um, I know that I'm going to be going up against him, so... My strategy here is to get through the game as quickly as possible. Uh, obviously without dying, because once you die, the game is over. So, I am cruising through this game. I have played this game since it was new, since 1987, so I'm very familiar with it. And the reason I issued the One Life Challenge basically was to motivate myself to do it, because I've never done a no death run for Castlevania um, before issuing the challenge, and that's how I motivate myself um, by competition. Um, because I've had plenty, plenty of opportunities to attempt a no death run at this game, and I just didn't put the practice into it, but. Um, if I'm going to go up against somebody, I'm definitely going to do it. So as you can see, I'm avoiding the majority of the candles so I can get through this as quickly as possible. And I'm doing pretty good so far. Now here, I, I'm, I keep tossing the axes here so I have less hearts to count down at this part right here. Because as you can see, this is taking time. And in order to beat uh, Mr. Mega Retro Man, I know I'm going to have to do this very quickly. So I don't want it. I don't want to spare a second. Now this is not how I normally play the game. Um, normally I would get that cross, but like I said, I'm, I need to do this as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm doing. And actually not doing too bad. I'm getting through this pretty quick here. So yeah, when I played this game back in 87, man, there wasn't anything... I had never played anything quite like it, except maybe Ghosts and Goblins. Alright, and... Okay, so here, this is a trick that I've been doing for 30 years. I, uh... <laughs> I got hit jumping, and it... And I got bumped up to the top floor, and I was like, damn, that's a hell of a shortcut. So that happened on accident way back in the day. So ever since that uh, that happened, I have been doing it on purpose since. So yeah, I've been doing that, that trick for 30 years. And now I have the uh, holy water, and the holy water is your best friend on this game, let me tell you. And uh, you'll see why here. Um, but the biggest thing about the holy water is it freezes enemies, and that helps out so much. Now, I don't know why I went back for that triple shot. That probably cost me a second, because there's a triple shot at the very beginning of stage 3. So I have no idea why I went back for that, but I did. And if you can't tell, I'm narrating this after the fact. But here I, I timed it perfectly to where I had zero hearts left. Well, not timed it perfectly, but worked it perfectly to where I... No hearts to count down, so that saved me some time right there. So yeah, right now I'm at 417. Doing pretty good. And everyone has different strategies for this game. Um, and it's kind of cool to see how everyone plays it differently. And I'll tell you right now, if I try to do different stuff on this game, I will die. I will fuck up. It, it messes me up. I have to stick to my routine. But, but like I said, when I normally play the game, I normally go after all the candles. It's just because, you know, I've got to do this quickly. 
but yeah, look at that. I mean, that holy water just kicks ass. And usually I can run through this part without getting hit. Every now and then the pattern changes, but 90% of the time it's this, this pattern right here. And you can just run by and not even get hit. And that helped me out a lot, that rosary <laughs> cleared the screen, so it cleared that, that, uh, dragon tower, dragon bone tower, bone pillar, whatever the hell it's called. That thing. I mean, shit, that six hits probably takes like two seconds right there. Hell yeah, I did pretty good on this stage. I'm at 6 minutes and 26 seconds. And again, the holy water, man. Look at how it just freezes the enemies. I mean, and you, if you have a triple holy water, good luck. The enemies are fucked. <laughs> You're gonna tear right through them. Alright, so I'm done with the first three stages in 6.50 right now, so doing pretty good. Alright, this next stage, oh, I hated this stage when I was a kid. This part in particular. The thing is, if you start running immediately to the right, you can, um, you basically outrun the enemies. Now here, the patterns can change, and those bats can screw you up, knock you into the water, or a fish man will jump up and knock you into the water, and runs over, so God knows that's happened, that had happened to me a couple times while practicing for this uh, no-death run. But, when everything goes smoothly, yeah, no problem. Now this part, all right, so you gotta be careful with this part because these hunchbacks have a tendency to drop an ax. And if they drop the ax, then shit's gonna get a lot harder because like I said, the holy water's your best friend in this game. So you gotta be careful for that. It's funny, when I was a kid, I used to think they were monkeys. It wasn't until I looked into the looked in the instruction booklet that there I saw that they were hunchbacks, but they look like monkeys. And they jump around like monkeys, so you know, I thought they were monkeys. Alright, now this part normally I get those candles, and when I do that, I can time that jump over that dragon to where I won't get hit, but when I don't get the candles, I always get hit. I can't ever make that jump, and no big deal, but whatever. Just some of the differences when you try to do this fast versus just playing it at a, at a leisurely pace. But here we go, Frankenstein and Igor, and with that holy water, pff, look, you don't even stand a chain, and they can't even move. That's how you do it. Nine minutes and 15 seconds right now. So that's four stages down. I'm cruising. And this stage is pretty tough, but if you have it memorized like I do, <laughs> and I don't care if that guy hits me because there's a pork chop coming up soon, so, big deal. And 
And there's like a hidden one up there, some other hidden stuff, but I'm just gonna pass it. Nothing too difficult. There's the fork chop. And on our way to the next section. Alright, so this next section has these knights that hurl axes at you. And they move back when you move towards them, so the way to beat them is to toss some holy water and then run away so that they follow you and walk right into the flame, which freezes them and kills them. And most of the time, for your trouble, it will give you a big heart. So you really don't need to go after the candles in this stage. Damn red skeletons, man. I could probably run past them, but I, I didn't want to chance it. See, that's how you beat those knights. You just toss one holy water, run away, and they will follow you and walk right into the flame, and boom, they're dead, and they'll yield a five heart. Big heart. So when you know that trick, pff, those guys are nothing. Man, when I was a kid, I would always get to this part and have such a hard time. I remember, th I thought, as a kid, getting this far was quite a feat. <laughs> I don't know, it was a couple years before I beat this game. And then this part is a bitch, but it, as long as you got the, the holy water and you lure the knights into it, you're good. I'm telling you, that holy water is, it, it creates miracles. Just watch this. Yup. You can't even move, dude. You can't even move. And this boss is hard. So, adios. But yeah, look at all those hearts I got. And those are mainly from defeating those knights. So, that's going to take some time to count down. Yeah, that took like five seconds. <laughs> All right, and the final stage, Dracula's stage. What am I, I'm at? Twelve forty-eight right now. Twelve minutes forty-eight seconds, and counting. All right, so this part, I don't fight the bats. It's just best to run away from them. And I'm gonna grab the stopwatch, and you'll find out why in a second because. Of the part that I have the most difficult time with in the whole game is coming up. And um, the pattern is unpredictable, so it's best to just use the stopwatch, and you'll see when I get there. You'll see. I mean, you're not going to see what I prevent, but trust me, when I use this stopwatch, it's for the best. Now, these skeletons are kind of like those knights. They, if you walk away or turn your back to them, they come towards you, and kind of how you get them to you here but but yeah this part here birds dropping hunchbacks with all these different platforms i mean it's just a disaster so yeah i use the stopwatch and i i try to avoid using the stopwatch in this part because the holy water is really helpful for dracula and having a triple shot is like you're guaranteed to win but if I die at that part and I can't even get to Dracula, what's the point? And they give you a holy water here. So, yeah, it's not a triple shot, it's not a double shot. But you can also attack Dracula's fireballs and he may drop a double or triple shot. So, I risked it. And some people like to jump over his fireballs and then hit him in the head while they're in midair. I like to hit him and then attack the fireballs because the fireballs will drop stuff. Like I said, it'll drop a double shot or triple shot sometimes. Though, I don't think it does in this playthrough.
But sometimes Dracula's pattern will just be off the wall every now and then, and it totally throws me off, and it'll he'll kill me. So it's not. I'm making it look a lot easier than it really is. Alright, so those of you very familiar with Castlevania know what's coming up here. So Dracula turns into this monster. And I'm trying to avoid... You have to hit him in the head with your whip. He does take damage from the holy water, but I'm trying to avoid jumping because he shoots those fireballs and those will often hit me. But... Look, look at how I'm hardly damaging him, so I decide that I need to start hitting him. And look how close that was with those fireballs. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I was trying to avoid. And one more hit, and I'm dead. That was close, and so was that. But boom! He's dead! And that is Castlevania. Beaten at 16 minutes, 8 seconds, point... 958, so basically we'll round that up to 1609. So yeah, and I, I know I could do it quicker if I practice more, but I'm good for now. 16 minutes and 9 seconds I think is a pretty damn good time. Uh, one of these days I think I'll try to beat it, but I'm content with that so far. So yeah, that's how I was able to beat um, Paul Tessie, uh, you know, by defeating it this quickly um, I knew that I was gonna have to do it fast because I had no doubt in my mind that he was gonna be able to do this that's why I set the tiebreaker to whoever beat it the quickest would win the challenge because I knew he was gonna beat it so that was my challenge is doing it as quickly as I could and 16 minutes and 9 seconds I think is pretty good it's not bad. So, anyway, that is my No Death Castlevania run. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned. I'll have some more challenges in the future. Adios.